this is Bishop Glenn Collier with the Spirit of Revival broadcast, and I'm always very excited to come to you. I pray that as you watch these broadcasts, that you are being stirred in your spirit man, that God is breathing an awakening into your heart and into your spirit. I pray that, that you are being reminded of your divine call, that you are being reminded you, that you are called to carry the glory of God. You're not a common person. You're not a common man or a common woman. Before the foundation of the earth, God ordained that you would be chosen and that you would live in this time. But you would live to make a difference in the culture and in society. God called you out of the world with a divine purpose. He didn't call you to be a church member. He didn't call you just to sit in pews. He didn't call you just to go through life. Uh, seeing how much you can be blessed. God already has blessed you. God already has given you the greatest thing that he could ever give, and that was his son, Jesus Christ. You've been bought by the, uh, by the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus. He has redeemed you. When you think about this, even before you turn to God, he had already made a way for you to come in right standing with him. He doesn't just want you saved. He doesn't just want you on your way to heaven. He wants to use you for his glory. He wants to use you for his glory. Why would God leave you on the earth? Some of you are saved. You're listening to me right now. What is the purpose for you remaining here? What is the purpose that you are still here on the earth? Is that you have a good time? Is that you acquire things? Is that you get things in life? That you live 70, 80 years and then God calls you home? There is a divine, godly, eternal purpose that God has you here. And I pray that the spirit of revival is awakening you to your call. You may not be a preacher, but you are called into the seven spheres of influence. You are called to impact education, the business world, you are called to impact government, uh, the political world. Come on, to impact families on the earth, media, and also entertainment and the arts. You are called to bring an influence from the godly presence of God into those arenas. You're not on the back burner. You're not on the back burner watching ungodly people make ungodly movies to feed our children. You are called to bring an awakening to arts and entertainment. You are called to bring an awakening to the business arena. If you're an entrepreneur and you're a businessman, you are called to bring godliness to that arena. You're called to bring the power and the glory of God. You're brought, called to bring righteousness into that area. I, I concluded the last message talking about Solomon as he was Preparing the atmosphere for God to dwell. I don't know, is your home prepared for God to dwell? Come on now. Is your church truly prepared for God to dwell? I'm talking about God's dwelling that will come down, that it will cause men and women to weep and to cry out to God, that will cause a cleansing and a purification, that will cause a man to walk away from his sins, that would empower a man to say, no longer, no more, I can't do this any longer. God is bringing an awakening to you, and you are called with a holy calling. And that calling is coming from the divine arm of God. Jesus Christ is not something you talk about. It's something being lived inside of you. You are the example to others to follow. Glory to God. You're the example for others to follow. You are the standard bearer. You are the one setting the standard in the nation. You are a godly man. You're a godly woman. And this time is made for you. So look at this, in 2 Chronicles, Second Chronicles, again, we're in uh, uh, chapter 6, and I'm going to read from verse 38. 
well, excuse me, verse 37. It says, yet if they bethink themselves. This is Solomon reaching out to the heart of God. He says, yet, Lord, when we sin, when we find ourselves off course, when we find ourselves off track, I don't care if you're a pastor, an evangelist, it doesn't matter what title you have. Let, God doesn't respect your title. God respects the life that you're living. God honors you because of the life that you're living. So God is not after our, our, our us becoming famous. God is after you living a life that Jesus Christ becomes famous, that the glory of the Lord is being shown to somebody, that it draws a man out of darkness and into his marvelous light. There's some people out there that may be on drugs. There's some people out there that, that may be caught up in a certain lifestyle. Let me tell you something. Today is your day of deliverance. You're not going to carry that any longer. You're not going to be caught in drugs. You're not going to be caught in an ungodly lifestyle. Come on, the power of God is here for you. And if you begin to agree with heaven, if you are tired of being tired, if you're tired of being beat down, the power of God is here today. And I'm calling you out. I'm calling you. I'm awakening you to the things of God. And as you awaken, God is arising upon you. As you're going forth and reaching for the heart of God, God, through the, through the, through the name and the power of Jesus Christ, is arising upon you. There is no power that's going to keep you from that. Deliverance is yours and is yours today. So Solomon is preparing this nation because he knew that if he got the nation in the right position, God would come. How many of you know when God comes, everything changes? When God comes, your marriage gets healed. When God comes, your family comes into order. When God comes, you're no longer chasing pipe dreams. When God comes, the heart of God begins to establish the will of God in your life. Hey, a lot of people don't know this because they're chasing after blessings. Blessings come from walking in the divine order of God. If you can find yourself walking in God's order, you will see blessings rain down upon you. Second Chronicles 6, 38 says this, 37, if they bethink themselves, say it another way, if they examine themselves, if they begin to see themselves for what they really are in the land where they are carried captive. Now you may not know this because the devil may make you feel like you are free. He's making you feel like, you know, you're on top of the world. You can live any kind of way you want to live. He's making us feel comfortable in our ungodly condition. But God says here, the word of God says, that when you are in the land where you are captive, that is the time to cry out to God. And we cannot be blinded right now. Something is trying to captivate this nation. There is sin around us. It's, 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 it's at the door even now, knocking on the door. And if you look personally, even at your own life, you begin to see where you allow the enemy to come in. I'm awakening you today. That is not what you're called to. And Solomon is saying to the Lord, when we find ourselves captive by things. I look right now, we're captive with a, 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 a mediocrity in the things of God. We're, we're captive right now with a compromised life. We're, we're captive right now. I mean, you may not be a drug addict, but are, where you, are you where God has ordained for you to be? Glory to God. If you are a father, listen, if you're a father, are you leading your family into the face of God? If you're a father, are you setting the example for the family to follow? Come on now. If you are a father, God has ordained you to leave, to lead and that you would hear his voice and you would follow his instruction. I tell you, man of God, if you do it, the voice of God will lead you into the face of Jesus and you will see a transformation in your life and in the family's life. Come on, it's time now that we see real men of God, real women of God. 
We're not going to preach a message that makes you feel good. I'm not preaching a message that's going to make you remain in sin, but makes you feel wonderful inside. It's time for a cry to come out from the earth that moves the heart of God, that transforms our nation and atmosphere, that takes real power that comes from the throne of God. And it takes a man or woman of God that's willing to put things down, their own agenda, their own programs, and cry out to God for uh, until he comes. This is what Solomon was doing. When you begin to see how many animals he sacrificed, if you think this man wasn't serious, 22,000 oxen. When that fire came down from heaven, he sacrificed 22,000. 120,000 sheep. Can you imagine? 120,000? It would take all day to slaughter them. It would take an army of people to accomplish that. But nothing was too small. Nothing was too great for what Solomon was preparing for. He knew that his nation needed God. And I'm saying, America, we need God. I don't care where you live in the nation, you are not safe. Unless you begin crying out to God and bring it, helping to bring an awakening to this nation, you are not safe. There is no place to hide. There's no place to run except at the foot of the cross, at the foot of Jesus Christ. There's no other place to go. There's only one cry that God is hearing now in the earth. He's not hearing the cry of giving you another big, a big house and a big car. Come on now. Don't be consumed by it. There's nothing for God to do that. You get, on, you get on track. You get on the agenda with God. You'll find they will come. Houses, lands, all of those things will come. But what God is after is his spirit and his power moving through you. He's, he's calling a nation back to him. Time is winding up and Jesus still is soon to return. Jesus still is coming soon. And when I come back, will I find a bride without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing? When I come back, will I find faith on earth? Will I find faith? You know what that faith means? If you read that chapter, he's talking about prayer. He's saying, he's in prayer. It says, Lord, uh, at the beginning of that chapter, he's talking about prayer. And then at the end, he comes back and says, will I find faith on earth? We got to be a praying people once again. Repentance brings revival and prayer brings revival. Solomon understood this and now he's moving the people towards it. Glory to God. So he says here in 37, when we're led away captive and we turn and pray unto thee in the land of our captivity. I love this because he's saying when you find yourself in this place, it is not the end of the world. When you find yourself, listen, oh my God, I'm thinking even right now, some of these young children that are caught up in sex trafficking. Let me tell you something. Us going to church every Sunday having a great service is not changing their lives. It's going to take the real power of God and it's going to take the saints on their knees before God to break the spirit over the nation as it relates to that. Men need to come free. Do you believe in the power of God? Do you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? We can keep doing what we're doing and see the climb of sex trafficking around the world. Or somebody can fall on their knees and I'm saying, church, that's you. That's time for some all-day prayer meetings. Glory to God. Not, not worship services. Not praise services. It's time to turn the music off. It's time the preaching doesn't have to go forward. I know men are saved by the preaching of the word, but let me tell you something. When those disciples were up in that upper room, they were on their face before God. They were calling out before God. They were praying relentlessly. God was bringing them into one accord. There was unity of the heart and the spirit. And on the 10th, day God breathed life down upon them and because of that you and many I and many of you are saved because of that we've been born into the power into the life of God because 10 men shut 120 people shut themselves up for 10 days 
If you think that we can bring a change and not do what the early apostles and disciples did, you are deceived. There's nothing new under the sun. There's no new program that Jesus is trying to get to us. There's already a model. There's already a blueprint. And there's got to be a people. The greatest thing that you can do for our nation right now is to get in your prayer closet and to begin to leave a prayer movement. Lead a prayer movement. Oh, glory to God. I'm thinking about many things right now. A hundred year prayer watch. The Moravian church prayed for a hundred, a hundred years. Can you imagine that? 24 hour prayer for a hundred years. More missionaries went into the world than any time in history. A hundred years, 24 hour prayer. Any revival that you go back and, and study, you will find that it was birth when somebody was baptized in prayer. They shut everything down and there needs to be, hey, is the time so bad now? Are we at the place where we need to be doing that? Or shall we wait? Shall we wait? Because it's not getting better. The decline is happening further, further. There is a prophetic voice and a prophetic people that's hearing the voice of God. Some of you need to change your churches right now. Some of you need to schedule a special time in your church for just prayer. And you got to stay in there with prayer until the flesh dies. You got to stay in there with prayer until you, until listen, until you no longer want to be seen or want to be heard. You got to stay in there with prayer. Sometimes it's silence for an hour, for two hours until God captures our heart again. Glory to God. I can't get past the first verse. I can't get past the first verse. And they turned to prayer in that land of captivity saying, we have sinned and we have done this amiss and we've dealt wickedly. We have sinned and we dealt wickedly. Until we get to that point, we're not gonna see revival. Think about Daniel, think about Ezra. Daniel cried out to his, for his nation. He cried out not only for his own sins, but for the sins of his father. He wanted everything clean. He wanted everything made right with God. And he began to cry out to God. And I'm tired of religion. I'm tired of what it steals from us. What do I mean by that? Religion can keep you comfortable and unchanged. Religion can keep you living the same way and your ear not attentive to God. Come on, we need a brokenness in America. We need a brokenness, you know what I mean by that? We need to be broken before God. We need to be humble before God. Listen, I wanna willfully get on my knees. I, I, I don't want God to break me. I, I don't want me to be stubborn in my sin and in my way that he has to break me before I cry out to him. I want to willfully go down. Hey, Solomon was leading a whole community, his whole nation. Pastors, I'm gonna encourage you. Your people are not gonna move into this until you begin to lead them into this. It's not gonna be, become a pr priority to them. And I'm gonna say this to you also, pastors. Don't let your congregation lead you. Most will not lead you into the face of God. You have to get into the face of God and lead them into God's face. Glory to God. I believe somebody's listening to me. Somebody's listening to me. Glory to God. And he says in verse 38, if they return to thee, Lord, we're in sin, we're in captivity. There are many things coming at us, but God, if I return to thee, if we return to thee, with all of our heart, with all of our soul in the land. See, God is not gonna take this little patty cake stuff. He's not gonna take this make-believe repentance. Come on, he, God is looking for the authentic and for the real. He's, he's searching the whole earth if he can find a man that was standing in the gap for a nation. We have been called to, listen, to be the sacrifice. 
not just to sacrifice, but to be the sacrifice. What do I mean by that? When the whole world and the church is going in one direction, somebody's got to die and fall on the face of God. Every revival, somebody was dying while the world was going on. And then when the revival broke, the world came running to where God was. Come on now. Your church has been called. Have your services. Add another one. Not to get, mem not to add, get members. Not, not to raise another offering. Have one. Have a service where you're just calling the people back to prayer. Monday night, Tuesday night. Everyone doesn't have to come. God will draw the ones. And there are people out there like you and me that know that this is the time. This is the time. And you're going to be a part of the revival that's coming. You are going to be a part that breathes breath of God back into the nation. See, I love what the father said to Ezekiel. I love what God said to Ezekiel. He said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And the Bible says that the bones were very dry. They were very dry. If you look at them, there is no life. They've been laying there for so long. They're broken and in pieces. How do you ever put them together again? Can these, can these bones live, Ezekiel? I don't know, Lord. Only you know. Ezekiel, speak to the bones and command them to come back to life. That's what I'm doing right now. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to look at these dry bones and your sphere of influence, and you're going to command them to come back to life. God says, when Ezekiel began to command those bones to live, listen, it says that they begin to stand up and, and bone came back to bone and they stood as a mighty army. What caused that to happen? Isn't it interesting that God didn't speak directly to the bones? He could have spoke to the bones. He said, Ezekiel, speak to the bones. Those bones responded to the command of the prophet, of the man of God. God is doing the same thing with you. You're going to have to start speaking what God is saying in this nation. Stop trying to please the people. Stop trying to please, giving them what they want to hear. And you're robbing them of transformation and conviction. And you're robbing them of salvation. And you're robbing them of being in the right position with God. Stop feeding the people what they want and give them what God is saying. And if you don't know what God is saying, get into his face until you hear the heartbeat of God. Because that's what's needed right now. I got to hear a word from God. I don't want to, I, 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 look, I got I to gotta get through the noise. I got to break through the noise. That's not God what you're saying. That's not God right there. I need to hear the voice and I need to know it's God. Speak to those dry bones and cause them to live. Your church is going to live. Your church is going to be a place of revival. The Holy Spirit is coming because he's coming to you and he comes to revive the brokenhearted. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh my God. My next message now, I see where my next message, I gotta do it. We're gonna speak about this place called brokenness. We're gonna speak about the place called brokenness. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because most people believe that it's the mountaintop that takes you to where you need to be in God. But I found that it's the brokenness that causes God to be great. It's when people become broken before God, God becomes great in their life. He's a great and wonderful God. So listen, I have a little bit of time here. He says, if they return with to thee with all their heart and all their soul in the land of captivity, whether they have carried them captive and they pray. I said, prayer comes before revival and they pray. Hey, you can keep praising all you want. I praise God too, but I'm telling you right now, there's a time for prayer. I'm not telling you to stop praising, but it's time for prayer. If you don't do anything else, I have discovered that people can praise and worship God and still live in sin. Oh yeah, I'm, they, they, they come to your churches and mine 
and they will praise because the music is good. The singing is wonderful. It makes them feel good. But prayer, you cannot stay in the same place if you commit yourself to prayer. Because the first thing that happened is God will cause you to examine your own life. He'll cause you to examine your own self. There begins to be a fire and a purifying that comes to the heart as your intimacy with God begins to grow. Let me tell you something, when prayer is right, the worship is even changed. When prayer is right, the praise is now. Not a feel-good atmosphere, but a God-filled atmosphere. It comes from prayer. It comes from prayer. And they prayed towards the land which thou gavest unto thy fathers, and toward the city, and towards the house that I built for thy name. Look at this. Then... Hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place. Hear what? Hear their prayers and their supplications. Prayer is a thanksgiving to God, but supplication is a bowing. He said, hear their supplications. Supplication is a bowing of the knee. When is the last time you were on your knees before God? You were on your knees before God, not sitting up in a comfortable position, in a broken position, humbling yourself. Well, I can pray standing up. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can pray standing up. God hears me anywhere I am. Yes, you can. But let me tell you something. When you enter into this real place with prayer, nobody has to tell you to hit your knees. When God shows up and the glory shows up, the knee bows and you begin to cry out to God. Yeah, glory to God. He's an awesome wonder. Hey, I'm getting ready to wrap this one up today. You need to be back for the next episode. You can see I am just getting started. I just covered two verses. I have so much for you. You got to hear the message on brokenness. You got to know what God says about brokenness and what God does with a broken a heart, a broken and a contrite spirit. Revival is not far behind. Well, we're, again, so excited. This is Bishop Glenn Collier with New Harvester International Ministries. You come and visit us. We're in Swanee, Georgia. Our website is newharvester.org. And listen, we're going after God. We're going after the heart of God, and we're not letting go. We love you. Amen.